Hey, what's going on, NBA draft fans? My name is Corey Tulliba. Uh, welcome to Film Sesh. I have a very special guest in the building with us tonight. We got Kendrick Davis with us to watch some film. Kendrick, man, what's going on? Man, hey, how you doing? Appreciate you for having me. Man, we're excited to have you on, break down some film, talk about how everything has been for you um, through this entire process. Uh, you've had one of the more unique journeys through this pre-draft process. You started out at Portsmouth and made it all the way through the combine. So take me through that experience going, you know, starting at Portsmouth and going to G League Elite and, and all the way through the combine. Yeah, well, uh, me and my agent, Corey Barker, who's with One Legacy, we kind of, uh, we laughed about it just because the season that I had, <laughs> and all American season, but I still had to, you know, go prove it again. And that's what I like doing. So it was fun, man. I like playing basketball. So I got a chance to compete at Portsmouth and um uh, got invited to the G League and then from the G League got invited to the NBA combine. But for me, it was more so uh of uh, showing everybody, you know, I belong there in the first place. Just just off the simple fact of the guy that was invited to the NBA combine is the guy that I feel like, you know, I've been busting ass <laughs> for you. I mean, it just, I just felt like they three, four inches taller than me. So that was the thing I felt, but I was glad I was able to show it. Yeah. Uh, and, and you did, man, you, you definitely showed it. And uh, I'm going to read a tweet that I love that it kind of goes along with that mindset where it was about the heat. You tweeted Miami heat always go have a chance mainly because they're into actual basketball players, hoopers, not potential and wingspan athleticism or upside. Either you can hoop or you can't. Right. And that's kind of the mentality that you've played with like hard over height. You never let that get in the way. And you had an unbelievable season this year. Uh, 22 points per game, five assists, four boards, two steals, all American. I mean, you broke record after record, right? Um, so yeah, like talk to me about, uh, cause I don't think you're alone and especially not with the guys that we've done some of these film sh sessions with where, you know, what is it about people who fall in love with, uh, you know, physical measurements versus the guys who have actually done and proved it on a basketball court? I mean, you just got to make it a fine line between trying to be a basketball expert and just, you know, being an expert is making it simple. Like, <laughs> I think a lot of dudes just want to be that expert, you know? And, yeah. Uh, it like, it's, it's almost like being a point guard again, like making a simple play sometimes, you know? <laughs> like, everybody want to throw the, throw the full court alley hoop instead of just throwing the, the kid a the pass. So that's how I look at it, like. We got a lot of dudes trying to be an expert and trying to find the next Giannis, you know, instead of just finding the next next player that's going to be in the league for 10 years. But I get it. I mean, that's how you make your mark, trying to, you know, I smart, I smart the game. But <laughs> that's how I just look at it. For sure. Do, do you play, you know, that kind of mentality? I'm sure you've heard your whole life that, you know, maybe you're too small, you know, whatever, like, uh, you see guys who, like you said, you've been busting their ass, you know, who are getting invited to different things. Does that put a chip on your shoulder? Uh, Yeah, but not really just because I got a lot of friends who are successful in the league, and they always tell me, like, bro, your talent is, like, you know, above all. And I think when teams see my film, it's really not who I am. And I think that's why I won throughout the pre-draft process. Just because, you know, for years and years I've been measured at like five nine, five ten, but I'm really six foot six one. Mm -hmm. And uh, teams be like, Oh wow, I didn't know you was, you know, actually that tall. Then when they see how big I am, I'm one eighty eight, I wanna say, so close to one ninety. It it you know, it makes them be like, damn, on T V or in college I measured wasn't like that. <laughs> uh but also being a point guard, like I've been labeled as, you know, a small guard who could score right and throughout the process they seen what what me and my my circle been doing and uh they like oh you can actually run a team and you know being able to score is always something that 
I haven't been able to do. You look at my first two years of college, I averaged 7.5 assists, and then I think it was, I want to say, 6.9. So I started out, you know, as a as a, a pure point guard, and the older I got, the more I had to score. And I think that's the label that stuck with me. Yeah, and uh, that definitely happens sometimes, right? Uh, but I, this year, you know, for me, um, I grew up in the 90s, and uh, if you were a kid, a basketball fan in the 90s, Penny was the dude. You know, like obviously Mike, uh, Michael Jordan was the man, but there was something about Penny Hardaway in the magic, the the pinstripes. Um, he was kind of like the, I, I mean, I was too young to watch Magic Johnson uh, in person. So like a six, seven, six, eight point guard, like he was that, that they didn't grow on trees. What was it like getting to learn from Penny Hardaway every day this season? Uh, it was great. It was one of the reasons why I had, you know, the year that I was able to have, uh, man, he was on me hard. Um, obviously, being the point guard he was, you know, you can't get away with no flaws off and on the floor. He, You know, and I tell people all the time when it comes to like, knowing the game and knowing what you need to be better at, as a point guard, you can't get no better than what he was. And um, I also had Larry Brown, too. So, I mean – he coached the greatest, and uh, they both was on me hard. Pete was on me hard. And uh, he just, you know, he made me believe in myself, though. Mm. Um, I knew I had game coming from SMU, but uh, after about two months of us being together, he was like, bro, you're going to play in the NBA. Like, he was like, I didn't know when I first met you how good. He was like, you you kicked our tail <laughs> years and years, but the other stuff that I had to, you know, get to know you ain't know, like – like he found that I'm all basketball, no drink, no smoke, no party. And then he was like, I didn't know you had game like this. You know, like people see you putting the ball in the hole and they be like, God dang, he could score. <laughs> he, he used to say, he was like, man, throughout the process, you're going you gonna to wake teams up just because you're really a point guard. And uh, <laughs> he was like, it's going to have to be. I mean, he just used to keep it real with me. Like, you know, when you get to the league, you're all going to be back to what it was when you first got to college, running the team, you know, showing people you can make everybody better. And then as years go on, you'll get more comfortable and comfortable. But, I mean, it was great, bro. He helped me. Like, the year I had was just the positions he put me in, the talks we had. And it was it was fun as hell, man, honestly. Uh, what's the best kind of uh, Nike, you know, uh, gear you got at Memphis? I mean, I would say – Going to the top, got some unlimited foams. Yeah, <laughs> they never dropping ever. So I still, I still ain't warm. He, we had to wear. Them. I don't even want to wear them. <laughs> Once he told me they never coming out, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to put on mine. <laughs> I might have to save them, but nah, got, got a lot of gear all year long. Like I said, he take care of us, and uh, me personally, man, I just. I just learned so much, and I feel like that's what made my game be ready for this next level. I was around an NBA coach, so yeah. And Larry Brown too, like you said, Chad. I'm I'm from Long Island, New York, so uh, Larry Brown, a legend, and he coached Allen Iverson. Um, you know, he's, he's Chauncey Billups, all these big time uh, NBA guards, and uh, you know, obviously he's another guy that I'm sure had a big influence on on you and and how you developed as a player. Yeah, yeah, he'd be on me hard. He was telling <laughs> That's the rumor, right? <laughs> That's what they he, say. He told me I was his second favorite guard behind AI, the coach, just because I'm he, like, I, every time they was in, every time they were in the gym, I were in the gym. So he loved me. And man, he'll scream when I shoot something crazy, <laughs> heart attack, or if somebody make a bad play he don't like, he didn't, he hated it. But I mean, it's all love. Like me and Coach Brown talked last week telling me how much he loved me and how much he tell everybody through our pre-draft that I'm going to make people look dumb and crazy. So he he's a huge supporter. Every work I go through, yeah, Coach Brown called us. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I love him. Uh, I love to hear it. Um, all right, let's start. Let's break down your game a little bit because, you know, you talked about your scoring ability. You talked about your playmaking ability. You're dynamic. And, um, you know, I, I think one of the things that really stands out is your ability to, uh, you know, get out and and go in transition here. 
And uh, I love this, a little sauce here. Um, so take me through this. When you're in the open court, I mean, you like playing fast? Yeah, yeah. My speed is is, is crazy. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, super, I'm super, like, shifty. Like, I change angles quick. And, uh, you know, you're not the, the most athletic. I'm an athlete, though. You know, like... Mm-hmm. I, I think that change of speed right there messed him up how quick it happened. Like, oh, shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's uh, – I, I think people sometimes underestimate, like, um, start-stop, short burst, uh, that kind of stuff when it comes to athleticism. And you, those are all the, the acceleration, de-accel- deceleration. That's all stuff you have in your game. I mean, I mean – the little Rondo fake behind the back pass right there. That's a uh, really crafty stuff. And um, so for one, you can obviously do it yourself, take it coast to coast and, and finish at the cup. But one of the things I noticed that you do really well is uh, you get the ball up the floor quick with these hit ahead passes. Um, what are you looking at? Like uh, what kind of synergy do you have with your teammates to know that like they're going to be there? Cause the ball comes through the net and you're throwing it you know, down the court already. That's really just like the point guard feel. You know, that's why that come in when I say I'm a point guard because, you know, growing up, your first first thing you taught is look up the floor. Mm-hmm. You don't have to take a dribble, don't take it. And uh, I just felt it. Like, I just felt like defense was lazy. They scored a book and it was lazy. And the first thing I did was look up and see them. But that's just a net. Anytime I can look up and see if somebody up, I always try to throw it ahead. Yeah, uh, this one is like a baseball pass, and this you generate easy buckets, um, quick offense in in scenarios like this, and I mean, that's great. Easy, two points. Uh, this one now here, sticking with uh, the transition transition stuff. This is textbook. You don't even put the ball on the floor. Like I coach high school kids, and uh, sometimes it's so hard they want to you know put the ball on the floor, dribble. You, Quick decision, quick pass. This is like stuff you see at like a, a camp when you're you're growing up learning the fundamentals. So, um, yeah, I love that the ball doesn't stick here with you, and and you can just make these quick decisions. Like, where did you learn to play like this? Well, honestly, it was more so like when you smaller. If I take another dribble, it's easier for him to play two on one and try to get back. Like I threw it to where I knew he would be out to play. Mm. A dribble in that play would kind of make it. I mean, I could still throw an alley and play two on one, but it make it a little harder for me. Mm-hmm. And to make it easier for me and DeAndre, I just throw it without having to dribble because he's backpedaling. Then his first steps was lazy. Why did yeah. So I throw it, and the angle that he takes, he kind of did, you know. And I let DeAndre be an athlete because, I mean, nothing more when you got wings that's super athletic this day time to shine, mm-hmm. you know, and they run hard knowing, expecting the ball. Like, soon as you can see DeAndre right here sprint out, that's letting me know, like, I need this ball, you know, and I used to tell all my wings that I play with, like, you run in the lane, I don't even have to take a dribble. I know you want to be an athlete. That's that's your film. <laughs> you know, I just threw it ahead knowing that I don't, I don't need, if I don't need a dribble, don't take it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you're so right about, uh, guys running the floor like bigs wings expecting the ball because if you don't you know if you dribble it in you take it yourself and you know you get blocked or you turn it over or whatever your guy might not run as hard next time right and that that hurts a team so I, I love the unselfishness um and I love the thought process behind that one and then uh you know your average two steals a game you turn defense into offense here yeah uh I'm great with playing lanes passing lanes like I'm I'm good. Like I mean I'm not the longest, but I'm super quick and I'm super fast. So I can understand what's finna happen before it happens. Yeah. Like I, I studied the game so much and I study film that I knew personnel. Like I knew he's a back to the basket guy and that was the first thing he was gonna go to. Mm. So before he even think help coming for real, I was already there. And um I I wanna say was that DeAndre? Yep, DeAndre, he loved transition is his thing. <laughs> yep. Instead of me using my open court speed and getting to the rim, I just slowed down patiently and let him run, let him run. And when they yep. me, I dropped it off to him. Yep. Draw the defense in 
yeah. and clears the lane for him. This is a, like this kind of like a Ho- uh, Jose Alvarado little you know poke away from behind defense yeah. to offense. Love and it. I got, and that's and like throughout the pre-draft, I think that's what I impressed teams with me being able to guard. You know, I show flashes, but you know when you play forty minutes a game and you got a huge offensive load, you you obviously you know you you. Your moments of guarding, but I think throughout the pre-draft process, I showed them like, nah, I can, I can really sit down and guard, and I mean, it was, it was good for them to see that. Yeah. What, what are the, uh, the keys like when you are on the ball? What are the keys to, you know, defending somebody one on one? Because I, I almost feel with, with shorter guys, it's almost like uh, a boxer. Like you almost have to like clo- get up in them. And you know, close the distance because you don't have the, the the same kind of length that a you know a long athletic guy is. So so, what do you look to do one on one when you're getting in somebody? For me personally, uh, I just take that chance. Of just like I'm a killer. Like when I say I'm a killer, I just don't want nobody to bust my head. That's for <laughs> you got to have the mindset first, and you got to have some pride about you to where yeah. I want to get a stop. And then secondly, I mean, when you're smaller, it's more of an advantage just because the ball is dribbled to the floor. You're, you're closer to the floor than he is. So it's always um, – for me, even playing against smaller guys is very uncomfortable for me. Like, I'd be like, damn, I thought I was small as it gets. And he'd, play, <laughs> and he'd be like, damn, I know what they feel like. So, I mean, you you lower to the floor, so it's already a discomfort in, in, in the dribble. And then obviously, I mean, you got to have – foot speed if you can beat a guy to the spot two two to three dribbles you want because by that time they got to get off the ball you know yeah. by the, you got help you got you know you got all type of scheme coming to play so i just i just play knowing you can keep this man in front of you three dribbles you good and then full court just making them turn a lot of guys really when you get up in them you learn who really dribble and I, <laughs> obviously you got dudes like you know you got the nba vets like lebron Paul George, who probably will throw it up, like I'm not messing with him. Just give it to me in the post. But <laughs> at that point, the wings that are tall can't guard them type dudes. So, right. Man, I just make it hard. Is there anybody in the league that you're you're kind of looking forward to to matching up with one on one on an island? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Either either my guy Desmond Bain, that's my brother. Though. That's my okay. Brother. Or Ja, because that's my guy too. So. Them, out of them two, I, I, for sure. All right, so the Grizzlies are on. Uh, <laughs> you'll be yeah. looking forward to the Grizzlies. Grizzlies are on the hit list for sure. <laughs> their facility, so all year, you know, I got a chance to spend time with all them. So you know them. That's family, and we had our jokes and our laughters about who would win one on one. So <laughs> I love that. You played with Desmond, right? Yep, yep. I played with Des. Yeah, he could shoot that thing, man. I was telling people coming out of me, I just got a text from Des this morning, literally. Like, he sent me a huge paragraph uh, about, like, my process and uh, how proud he was and how I'm going to do the same thing he did as far as making teams kind of, you know, re- regret it. Yeah, 100%. Um, I love that mentality. And I, I love – I think it's amazing to, to be able to pick up things from guys who have been there, done it before, and, and gone through it. Um, yeah, that that's awesome. So. Uh, Let's stick in with transition, but now kind of moving on to how you can get buckets in transition. You love this shot, this pull up in transition. That's a big time shot against Houston um, in the second half. Uh, you know, take me through these these pull up threes because uh, this is a shot that I think you feel real comfortable with, and is a big time you know NBA level shot. Yeah, that's my shot. Like that that transition shot is my shot. And- and Penny used to tell me every time you get in a transition, if it ain't, if you don't have that throw ahead, take that shot. And uh, like at that time, I think we was down two. Yep. And uh, the crowd was rocking in me. <laughs> and uh, I seen DeAndre running, but I couldn't. Re- it was gonna be a thread the needle pass, and I'm like, ah, not right now. And um, I seen Marcus Hassel trying to like, you know, respect my speed. He respect. Yep speed like I know he fast as hell and uh I just raised up just because I, I seen him respecting it and and the crowd went man the crowd went crazy that day yeah you could see after you connect with it uh everybody get up and uh 
Gotta love college crowds, man. But yeah, Sasser, he's dropped back because he's trying to, you know, play you for the drive and you make him pay. And, uh, you know, what I love is you don't have to be the guy who's actually, you know, initiating the break. You could still contribute um, off the ball, spot up. Tough shot over a, a, a tough contest there. So, um, you know, what's the difference kind of, you know, between taking the, the, the spot up three in transition, running to a spot and, you know, uh, taking the pull up three with the ball in your hands? Uh, just knowing that you got to get it out your hand quick when you run in the lane, like right here. Uh, this is my biggest attribute in transition. Like I could play on and off the ball just because that's my shot in transition, a catch and shoot three. All year, honestly, Penny used to try to get more of these for me. Like if somebody get the rebound, me hurry up and get out just because I can I can really shoot the ball. I mean, a lot of my shot selections wasn't great. It used to tell me all the time, man, if you can get out and run, I'm telling you, them, them transition threes, I think I was shooting them at a high clip, and he just wanted me to get more of them. And, and right here I seen a guard got the rebound. I didn't want I just got out, you know. At that time, we needed a spark. We were struggling, and Jay found me on the other wing, and it went in. I think after that, we went on like a 12-0 run. Yeah, that's a big-time shot. You run right to the spot, and uh, over a tough contest, too. So, I mean, did, did contest bother you at all? Nah, once it's out of my hand, I, I kind of – I can tell you if it's going in or not. Like, I I mean, my whole – like, I, I work out – with imagining a seven footer guarding me, mm. like I don't, a cont- for me is nothing. Like we be at practice and Penny would tell the guys all the time, just doing a hand up on him is not good enough. Like you, if you ain't blocking it, something wrong. Nah, like for me a contest is, I, it never really bothered me. Yeah, I uh, I just did one of these with Ricky Council, and you know we were talking about. Uh, I feel like a lot of people make. Uh, a big deal about like creating a ton of space with, um, you know, your dribble and, you know, you got to create space off your shots to get clean looks. And, you know, I, I, I was kind of asking him, you know, some of these shots that are contested, like they look clean because you're getting right to your spot. And and sometimes when you get to a spot, even if a shot looks contested, you might not even see that defender. Right. Yeah, m- mostly. Yeah. For me, too, just because I can I got a handle and I'm so fast. A lot of these shots, they give me, you know, mm. like I'm not letting him blow past me. That's right. I want him to do. And uh, so for me, I can get to my jump shot anytime just because they respect the speed, you know, and the handle to the point where they like, yeah, you're going to have to shoot it. <laughs> I'd be like, OK, bet. I mean, <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. And and here, let's let's see the range. I mean, like you said, they're stepping back. Splash. High arcing, beautiful. You know, you know that you could hear that net snap when that thing goes in through the hoop. <laughs> that's the best feeling hearing that net. And the form that, I mean, obviously that's the Grizzlies arena we play in. So them rims are super stiff. Like if it's not a splash, they kind of don't go in. So it's always <laughs> great getting it. Yeah. So uh, here you're in uh, you're in Disney, and uh, it, this is this is a tough tough move this you hit him with the little snatch back who'd you get this from uh actually i watched a lot of ai mm. and he, ai always said because i was so fast and so shifty i'd beat a dude off my first step and he would try to get back into play and i'm automatically knowing i got him and for this like i said my speed and my my handle and my burst is so fast to the point where once I feel you on my heels and stay trying to go finish on the trees, I'm going to snatch back and take a three over a two. And I remember this like crazy because Penny got into it. With, I, what's uh, the scene hall coach? At, he was at St. Peter's Hall. Uh, Holloway. Holloway. Yeah. Uh, if you know Penny, he told me, he said, go at their ass. <laughs> he know that gets me going just because I'm a killer. So, I mean, I was, I was just in full attack mode. I love it. I love it. Um, that's the mentality you need, man. Yeah. Talk about space creation. You got him sliding all over the court on that one. Um, and then UCF here, um, uh, not really sure what the game plan was, but uh, 
they go under here on this ball screen. When you see somebody go under, um, I mean, is that a pull every time? Autom automatic. Like my teammates say, anytime they go under, <laughs> you get back on defense. <laughs> uh, honestly, just just knowing time and situation, not every time. Like sometimes I want to rescreen just because the floor of the game, you know, you don't right. want to mess up the floor of the game because they going under, going under. But uh, for me, yeah, like this, we was down six with two minutes to go, and he go under, and I, I trust my work. Like the hours I put in, I'm like, nah, you gonna pay. But <laughs> I could see why they was going under because it was. I think they were in the one and one. I mean, we was shooting two, and I think a couple of my teammates got to the line back to back to back, and I think they were like, nah, we we they gonna have to live and die by the three. He went under, and that was my shot. That's a layup. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a shot like that at the top of the key. I can make that probably seven out of ten times. Yeah, that's 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 a layup for for a shooter like you, um, especially somebody as comfortable off the dribble. Uh, <clears throat> now you mentioned, you know, Coach Brown and, and and Penny. Sometimes they'd uh, get on you for for shot selection. Um, if you could have, you know, this one back. A lot of dribbling. Nobody else really touches the ball. I mean, you get a clean look at it, but uh, what do they tell you here, you know, in situations like this? Yeah, uh, I think I had a hot night that night. I think I had went for like 25 in the first half, uh, and we were up, I think, 20-something. Yeah, 20 and, yeah, we dribbling out the clock, and uh, Penny actually told me this. This was like a teaching moment. He was like, uh, I broke. He telling him he pointed to DeAndre to play two man game, and I don't even use the screen really, and and make the defense you know shift a little more. He was like, I know you can make that shot, but that's in 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 reality that's a tough shot that you just got used to making. But he was like, just get it moving and it'll come back to you. And that, yeah, that was one of the learning tools because I create so much separation on all my shots. I just automatically think like, okay, it's a good shot because my separation is crazy on all of them. And he said, he was like, I played the game at a high level, and the moves you make, they're so shifty, and you get so much space. You really do the good shot every position, but for the sake of the time and the floor of the game, I could have probably swung it right here. Mm. Come off, I could have hit him, and he could have ripped and probably, you know, got to the free throw line. So it was just like a learning, learning one. Yeah, I, I love it. And, I mean, you know, you're in a situation – end of the game you're up 20 something points right like it's not like this shot is gonna hurt hurt you but in a different situation maybe game's a little bit closer it could be an empty possession but you know that's what great coaches do they they make teaching moments out of it now uh, the one thing that i think is people don't realize about your game is how good of a spot up shooter you are mm -hmm. you so you you shot about 35 36% from 3 this year you were over 37% the 2 years before that so you could shoot the ball and you take a lot of tough pull ups but if you just isolate your unguarded catch and shoots you hit 54% of your catch and shoot unguarded shots mm -hmm. now i mean that's insane you, one out of, over one out of every two threes um, so people cannot leave you open and at the next level, I mean, at Memphis, you had the ball in your hands. You were the engine at the next level. You might be playing with Ja, you might be playing with Luca or LeBron and you're going to be getting looks like this. Um, so, you know, what kind of work do you put in to kind of master the art of the spot up shot? Uh, man, if I tell you, you wouldn't even believe it. I mean, <laughs> make 207 spots, catch and shoot all around the floor. And then after I make 200, I shoot each spot for a minute. And then after the minute, I make seven in a row each spot before I move. And that come from different angles, uh, driving drills, close eyes, uh, just different scenarios. So every shot can be comfortable. And uh, like I said, throughout the pre-draft process, it's been one of the things that team's been most impressed with. You know, I don't need the ball. Yeah. Like, I was in college. I needed the ball just so it give us a chance to win. But teams starting to see, damn, he can play on and off, you know. And uh, defensively, I'm strong enough to hold my own. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not no little small five seven, five eight, five nine guard. Like I'm actually six foot six one, one eighty. So I mean, that surprised teams with just how I'm guarding too. And uh, I think when you break down my film for real, you look and be like, okay, you know, he really. 
shoot the ball off the catch. It ain't got to be in his hands. Like, and I think that's that's what's most surprising for teams. And me and Des, Desmond Bain talk about it all the time because he, you know, played with me. And he was like, man, what teams finna learn is off the catch, your shot is money and you're a floor general. So, I mean, they gonna, they gonna, when teams get to see you, they gonna be like, wow, shit, I was surprised. Yeah, and uh, this is a big, big time shot too because you're down three, two minutes to go. Clutch shot. So you got that, you got that clutch gene in you. I mean, when when it, it gets to crunch time, you, you get excited about that. Yeah, we had a slogan. Uh, me and my Memphis, my Memphis fan base. When they get under four, get a ball to me. So, <laughs> and he used to always tell me, "Go get the ball." Like, yeah go get the ball but he never really had to tell me that i would tell coach hey coach this is my time you know and because i was a leader i never wanted the ball to be in my my other guys hands with them in difficult positions i would take the blame every day just because i worked the hardest and the work i put in i believe in i believe in it and uh it was just a good play i mean he, he seen me open and hit me and i mean where i caught it from i let it go yeah i mean range confidence uh stepping up in the moment big time shot from a big time player right yeah. but uh what what makes you such a good scorer a complete scorer is that you have the speed to get to the hoop you can shoot it from distance but you got the in between game too um and you know I, I think if you were just a guy who could get to the hoop or you're just a shooter you become predictable adding this in between element um it's really hard to kind of guess what you're going to do on a possession to possession basis. So uh, how do you kind of work on mixing up and what are you reading? No, like deciding between I'm going to pull up from three, I'm going to drive or I'm going to stop on a dime and pull up from the mid range. Yeah. Uh, just how teams guard me like here, they respect my speed and, um, he respected my speed and he respected like my head. So once I hit him with this right here, that pound dribble up shot, froze them. yeah it kind of like messed them up just because i got into my shot so quick and i i don't I, like me personally i love shooting the mid-range in the in the three more than the, the layup that like my mid-range i would say probably top 10 the best in the draft i would say mm -hmm. I, I lived off of it for a while when i was struggling from the tray I think I lived off of it. So I just seen him bagging up, respecting my dribble. Like, I mean, they always going to do. So I just took what he gave me. Yeah. And uh, froze him and uh, you get elevation. So, you know, you, you're six foot, six one, whatever, but you get, get enough elevation. Now it's a tough shot to, to block, especially when you got somebody on your heels. So, um, you know, we've seen the three, we've seen that you can get it done in the mid range. Um, and then, you know, you also can can get downhill and and put pressure on the rim, uh, and here you go, Houston, tough defense, physical defensive team, athletes, aggressive, split the double there, up and under with the hang time finish. What kind of stuff do you work on um, for your finishes or at the rim? I work, I mean, I work hard on my finishes just because I can get to the lane anytime. But if you get there and can't finish, it's pointless. Yeah. Like, like you said, Houston is a hard-nosed defensive team, and uh, that's what gave me my confidence that I could play. Just because my best games, you go look at it, was against Houston. You know, all them top teams in the country, Alabama. Them was my best games, and when we played Houston, Marcus Sasser, he always said, "Man, you you're the best guard that I like that we play. Like you, like because we know for sure you bring a game every chance, every time." And I mean. Obviously, I got weakness in my game, but I can do everything if I have to, whether it's shoot for Trey, whether it's middies or getting to the rim. So right here, they, they like the hedge, and I love that because Big's kind of slow. Like, <laughs> I just yeah. I just split it. And, um, Good screen, too. Yeah, great screen. And, and I split. I think I had split like three times in a row, but either I'm going to split or get around them and I seen Marcus Sass at the lane and I knew he wasn't really a real contest. Yeah. Shout out to Marcus Sasser. We did uh, yeah. one of these with Marcus. Great dude. Um, so you, you know, <laughs> I think if an, an NBA team was, was talking about you and your finishing, I think, you know, they might say 
at the college level, you got bigs that are athletic and strong, but you know, you're going to have Joel Embiid or Anthony Davis waiting there and you're going to have to finish, you know, amongst the trees. So what kind of stuff do you work on to kind of counter, you know, guys size at the rim? Uh, honestly, right here, I should have kept my dribble alive and uh, hit corner, hit corner driving drift, and it would have gave either a shot or a swing, swing to a shot or a closeout. Like, if I keep my dribble alive and attack his top foot and, and, and you know, do my Chris Paul around him. <laughs> yeah. I got Jay, look, he holding his hands up like, you know, like I'm open in a corner. And uh, Yeah. That's like, you don't even, if you don't have to try to finish over them, just don't, you know. And, yep. Cause the ball will find you, you know what I'm saying? And yep. like, right here, they playing drop coverage like most teams gonna play. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, when the bigs up, I'll be able to get around them foot speed. But still, when you get around them, they coming. So just knowing they coming and making a play for your teammate. Yeah, you could even get a rescreen there, and you know, mm -hmm. kind of take it patiently. But you know, one of the aspects in the counters <laughs> yeah. that uh, that you have to your game. Um, when you do get to the rim, I think you got really good finishing touch. And here, you go high off the glass to kind of counter. Taylor Hendricks had a great year protecting the rim. Um, so, you know, who are some of the guys that you watch, you know, for for the the crafty little finishes at the, around the rim? Uh, Dennis Schroeder. Mm. Uh, Monte Morris. Trey Young. Uh, Jose Alvarado. Gay. Vincent. I mean, I'm watching just I can go on. Yeah, you're watching NBA ball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I watch a lot. And that how the glass shot. Even Ty's like I watch a lot of Ty's Jones. Mm -hmm. Um that how the glass shot. That's that's the Ish Smith. Uh that how the glass you got to because I mean I knew Taylor Hendricks period all uh, year. Great. Like I said, one of the one of the best players. Probably gonna be out this draft. Got a chance to play against him, and uh, he coming for sure. He coming, and he's long as hell, and he's an athlete. So I knew if I didn't get this high, it was going out of bounds. Yeah, Taylor, another great guy. We did one of these with him too. Um, he's hell of a shot blocker, and you get you pause it right here. I mean, he looks like he's about to high point he that thing and send it, it. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> You got it. You got it up over him. You got it up over him for sure. <laughs> Easy meat defensively for sure. Yeah, yeah. But you got those counters, and then look at that you're dribbling through everybody, and then you got the float game too, because that I think that's another great way to counter um, size, and, and it's something that could be a real weapon for you in the NBA. Look at that handle behind the back, going through defenders, and then teardrop. Um, the 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 floater always been a part of your game. Uh, not really, honestly. Uh, I worked on it. I worked on it a lot. Um, I just really started shooting it this year. Me and my agent was talking, and two things used to always tell me, I want you to do. I want you to slow down a little bit just because I'm so fast. And he was like, I just I want you to add a mid-range slash floater. And uh, this summer, that's all me and Penny did because I always could shoot the tray and I always could get to the rim. But he was just like, that floater going to be your layup. At the next level, and I want you to get comfortable. And this past year, I got real comfortable. And um, throughout this summer, that's all I've been working on was, you know, snaking a ball screen and getting to the float or putting them on my hip, getting on the floater. So, yeah, that float is going to be what's going to make my money at the next level. Yeah, 100%. And then, then you get in that, like, Emmanuel quickly Trey Young predicament as a defender where you got to come up and guard it and you, you start – getting the ability to fake and drop it off as a, a pass to, you know, NBA athletes for, for oops too. Um, here's another floater. And I, I just want to highlight your footwork here. Uh, I mean, you got like a reverse, the reverse Euro to, to get into the paint and finish with the same foot, same hand. I mean, that's tough. Yeah. Taylor Hendricks came over again, trying to get it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. what he does. <laughs> but yeah. How did, what, what kind of stuff do you work on for footwork? Have you always been good um, with your footwork? Like, did you play other sports growing up that might have helped with it, or is it natural? No, nah, I jump rope every day. Uh, mm. I jump rope five minutes in the morning before I work out and five minutes at night before I go to sleep. And 
throughout the day, you know, in my strength and conditioning session, we do a lot of ladder, a lot of ladder movements. And uh, just right here, man, I just, I attacked this top foot and he kind of moved out the way. And um, I was trying to avoid Taylor Hendricks, like I said, but he came over and I had to get it over him. So, yeah. And you great job um because that's a tough shot so yeah the agility to keep balance and get that over that's tough that's a tough shot uh, i want to transition now to uh your playmaking because you know i think for somebody who's a dynamic scorer if you can't use that scoring to leverage um and make plays for your teammates you know it it isn't nearly as effective and, and worthwhile but i mean you draw so much attention and you do a great job of, of making your teammates better. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to pause this clip here once you get in the paint, because right here, I mean, that whole team, that's five jerseys kind of focused on you and, uh, you make a great kick out for the, for the shot. So when you're getting downhill, like how do you kind of read the difference on, I'm going to get all the way to the hoop versus I'm going to make a play for my teammate. Uh, right here, just, you, I think the whole lane collapse. And ain't nothing better than a corner three, like Penny. Yeah. Did. And anytime I seen somebody in the corner, I'm hitting it, and that hedge was weak, so I kept the big indecisive, and I was able to get in the paint. And once I got in the paint, and I seen, you know, them collapse, I just hit the corner, just knowing that's the shot, and that was one of our better shooters. So, uh, we that was a that was a big three because I think they had cut the lead, even though that we was up a lot, they had made a run, and um. Anytime I see the defense collapse, and I'm always looking in the corners. Mm. Yeah, that's the that's the shot, and at the next level for sure. What was it like playing, you know, SMU this year? Oh, it was it was great. Like uh, that's family. That's I mean, I'm doing my pre draft at SMU, so uh, like I said, I'm a great dude. So <clears throat> I'm a great dude. So I mean, when I left, it was still love and it was still family. So yeah. it was never. It was. Uh, it was great. Like them. Them. Some of them was my teammates, and them was my, like my brothers. I went to war with. So I mean, we just had fun and we competed. I had great games against them, but uh, I just looked at it as another game and another opportunity. And uh, I'm just so happy we. I'm happy we beat them every time. <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. Um... So you you get in the paint, collapse, you make the kick, shot that open, that's a layup. Um, again here, similar thing on an island. Uh, I mean, how hard when you're you're playing five out right now? How hard is that for the defense when you guys are going five out and you got a defender on an island like this? Uh, we just knew this was a weaker defender uh, from scouting report. And I didn't want to settle on no jump shot on no weaker defender. And uh, Tulane played matchup zone. So anything, you know, anytime you get in the paint on them, it's it's going to open up something. And like I said, anytime I'm in the paint, I can get in the paint at will, but uh, he wide open in the corner. So I didn't want to really shoot this shot because that's my shot, that hizzy. And yep. Said, nah, I can't bail him. I, I got to get in the paint. And they collapsed. Yeah. End of, end of the court or end of the half, um, all the attention, again, you stop it. You got four jerseys collapsed on you, and uh, I mean, that's ten feet of <laughs> of space there for the shot. Great kick out. Now you talked about the the corner passes um, at the next level. I think this is going to be this is the biggest pass you know at the NBA level that weak side um, skip pass to the corner, and you know you throw this thing perfectly. So um, what are you reading here from the defense? Um, that you see that corner open? I'm reading the tag man. Like, uh, if the tag man's, you know, sinking all the way in, I'm hitting the corner. If he's, like, playing like I want to get out to the corner, get out to the corner, I'm going to hold my dribble for the roller. Mm -hmm. um, but he's too deep. He's too deep. Like, just, I had to get it out. I seen him. He's on the other side of the basket almost. You know? Yeah. And number 15 here, he, he can't even X out. His his back is turned. Yeah, his um, back is turned. Usually that would be an X out and that yeah. swing swing. But uh I just seen he was so deep underneath the rim and that's kinda like a for me, I love making them pass and them cross court zips. So Yep. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful read, and I think that's gonna be a major weapon uh at the next level. It shows your kind of the court vision that you have. Um 
And then here, again, um, are are you reading kind of the low man? See, there, there's nobody under the hoop, um, and and this is when you know to throw the lob versus you know, kind of take it in or make a, a pass to the corner. Yeah, uh, Ko DeRichie, he's like one of the best athletes in the world, and um, yeah, they was playing like a little drop, and he got out of his role quick, and he got behind the defender, and once he got behind it, as long as I threw it up anywhere near the rim, I knew he would get it, and. Uh, he rolled unbelievably quick, and it kind of put the defender in a in a jam. And this is like a good example you're talking about that your agent wanted to kind of have you play slower. Like you show real great like pace and and patience here, um, coming off the screen. Like you don't explode off of it. You're gonna come off and and kind of put that big in that pe- cat and mouse situation, and you throw with a little scoop up in the air. Yeah, I just threw it behind my head because I seen <laughs> that high roll. I seen how slow the big got out of out of the drop. I was like, "Oh, you did," you know. <laughs> yeah, that was like one of the traits I think through our pre-draft that I want to show teams. Like, I actually have pace coming off. You know, usually this a drop coverage, and uh, they give you the floater. But I want to show, like, I want to show teams I'm a point guard, and it's like one yeah. of the plays that you got to consistently make at the next level. Yeah, but that big has to step up to you because he knows that you can hit the mid range shot and then you can hit the floater. You're a threat out there. If if you weren't a threat, he can kind of drop back right and stay with the big. But you you're too unpredictable because of your scoring that that he's got to come and get you. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I say uh, throughout the process, I just want to show teams I can score. Just because you look in the playoffs, and man, if you can't score, even not even just playoff and basketball period, if you can't score. You make it hard for your teammates. You know, after you play four and five and defensively in the league, ain't nobody no stopper for you not to be able to kind of score. You know, mm. you're hard on some dudes, but you're not stopping them greats. Like, yeah. Or you're not stopping the Jimmy Butler's to where you can't score. Like, I see a lot of dudes where throughout the pre draft process, they hanging their head on, I'm a defensive stopper, which is fine to have that mindset, but you're not really stopping the greats. So, yeah. You just got to hope you make them work. Yeah, you just got to make them work. And still, even with that, your first couple of years in the league, yeah. nowhere near going to stop them. So, no. Nah. A, 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 a force on the other end where they got to, you know, they got to respect you. Yeah. Jason, you might make Jason Tatum work and you might end up with a 50 piece. Um, yeah. <laughs> even, even so. <laughs> and, and, you know, it wouldn't even work. It was like this. I just... <laughs> so, uh, you know, talk to me about, you know, the rest of uh, the process. You have, um, you know, we're, we're a few days away from the draft. What do, what are you going to be doing the, the next couple of days leading up to the draft? Man, just, you know, thanking God, staying in the gym uh, with my son, just, you know, praying for whatever situation is great. Like I said, I don't I don't care if I ever get – I don't care if I get drafted. I don't care if I do, don't, because I done seen dudes go top team out the league and I done seen dudes go undrafted who's in the league, you know, and it's about, it's all about fit and it's all about who going to be in the league longer, not who going to get there first. And uh, I just want to go to a right situation and just, you know, put my head down and grind like I've been doing throughout my, my whole life, proving, proving everybody wrong. And uh, I love doing that. I'm a competitor probably at the highest level, like, like a Jimmy Butler competitor, man. That's that's the level I'm at, and I just wanna wherever I go, man. I just wanna, you know, be blessed first, cause don't too many people get to do this. But uh, no. that's when the work start. You know, I wanna I wanna be in the league for five to ten years. I wanna when it's all said and done, I want y'all to be. I want the next wave to be kind of like I brought the guards back. You know, I brought, <laughs> I brought the small guards back, cause I think. It's a copycat league, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? A hundred percent. They they were saying Desmond Bain arms was too little. Now, if you could find a guard in college who can shoot it with small arms, he's a Desmond Bain comparison, you know. And uh, I just want that to be the next wave. But I look up and see uh, there's a Kendrick Davis comparison in the league. So just working, man, and, and grinding. Who are some of the guards that you you watch growing up that you know uh, influenced your game the most? Yo, Tyler Ulis, Rashard Phillips. Shout out to Yoda. Yoda. Uh, um, AI. 
Muggsy Bow, Isaiah Thomas, both Isaiah Thomases. Mm. Uh, man, I go on and on. Darren Collison. Mm. Uh, yeah, you're a student of the game. You're throwing some names out yeah. <laughs> from, from all generations. Yeah, um, Orange Hill, like dudes that just, you know, ain't the most athletic but can hoop and can play and and winners like i want to be known with whatever team i go to wins whatever organization give me it wins whether it be on the ball off the ball on the floor whether i gotta wait my turn you know years and years like i i just win you know and i want to be labeled as a winner i'm a culture changer i think just because i don't drink smarty party smoke do none of that like and my girl my son they they all grinders too with basketball so I think I could change a, you know, a culture and a team, you know, that's just what I'm looking forward to. I love to hear it, man. Uh, Kendrick, thank you so much for spending time, chopping it up, sitting down, breaking down your film and providing um, some really great insight to not just your game, but, but basketball in general. So um, uh, appreciate you, you stopping by and good luck the rest of the way. Man, appreciate you and uh, appreciate you for having me.